There it is, our first little quail. should arrive tomorrow. However, I have to run into Spokane, so I am going to set this up in the morning, and I have a list here of all the things I need to do, what temperature and how many days and the turning angle. And then my wonderful husband, when the eggs arrive, probably around noon, will put them in the incubator, and he will film that, won't you? Of course I will. Awesome. Okay, so it's kind of crazy that I've been waiting for these eggs to arrive and I put a lot of time and effort into them and the day they're actually going to get here, I have to be out of town. But I'll be here tomorrow night and we will get this going. I am using the Brensi Mini 2 Advance and it has a lot of automation which I approve of because I've never done this before. I have never hatched a chicken or any other kind of bird and I've never raised one. so. I have lots of chance for success, don't I? But I'm gonna set this at 99.8 degrees and I'm going to set the um, egg turning for four seconds. So it turns it for four seconds and that's based upon the egg size. And also it will do it every 45 minutes. So, and then I fill up the water and basically it just does that until on day seven I have to add a cooling period. And then on day 16, um, it stops turning and I can either let them hatch in here or I can hatch them in a brooder. The mailman is coming down the driveway. Okay, the mailman just delivered this package to us on the farm. What we appear to have is one dozen quail eggs. I'm afraid I'm going to have to use all of these to make an omelet. It's going to be a small omelet at that. Just kidding. I have to put them in the incubator now. Here they are, they're in the incubator. I put them in as per Virginia's instructions. Our eggs for our quail have been in the incubator for about 15 days, so I'm going to let them hatch in the incubator and I need to take them out, take out the turning disc, put in the cardboard disc, and then put the eggs back in without breaking or dropping anything. So let's see how that goes. Okay, now we're going to put this back on. All right, so this now is not going to be doing any turning. And I've added extra water to increase the humidity. Now we just wait. The quail eggs are about ready to hatch. So I figured I should probably put together some type of brooder situation for them. I bought this plastic tote and my husband took the plastic tote lid and cut out two panels and then he riveted in this uh, wire mesh that we did two layers of. So hopefully that is enough protection. I brought this heater from Brincy. It's an infrared heater, so it doesn't um, use a lot of electricity or throw off a lot of heat. It's more of uh, when you're right near it or contact. And so they can run in and out of there as they like. I decided to try to use these little lids at the beginning couple of days for water and for feed. I'm super excited to see if I'll actually have any quail eggs hatch and then they're gonna be really tiny and hopefully this situation will work with them. But stay tuned and we'll find out. Well, it's exciting time here on the Tomarosa. We got some movement on some of the eggs. And we're at about day, going into day 17. I hear a peeping. No way. Yeah. There it is, our first little quail. Carly is like, dude, is that lunch? <laughs> it's got big feet. And here is our second quail that looks like it is finally making its way out.
here is the chick crumble that I bought for my quail. Now, this is still a little too big for the quail, so online it said to grind it. So my mom gave me her own coffee grinder. This might be a wee bit overkill. It's probably the nicest chick grinder, chick feed grinder ever used, right? And I put it in there, and I put it on the coarse setting. So it's fine, it's not a powder. So I've ground some of this up, and I've got it ready to go. And here, I did decide to put a layer of this like thin, really light hay on top, just because I thought it would mat a little better and give them a little bit better purchase. Here's my container for the food. I also saw where they said put a, down a paper towel and just sprinkle some on, so that might, I'll have to see how that goes. And here's for the water. And the heater is on. So far, we have two quail chicks. Hopefully one of them is female and we're gonna see if any more hatch within the next 24 hours. It has been about 12 hours now since we had our first quail hatch. We still only have had one hatch on the top of that, and but I've seen others that look like they are trying to hatch. So now I'm worried that we have a humidity problem and that they just can't hatch out. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the two that did hatch into our brooder and open up the, the incubator to check on those other eggs. Again, a disclaimer, this is the first time I've done this, I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's see how it works out. So here is our incubator with the two chicks. Here's the plan. I'm going to take the lid off the incubator and the brooder. Well, one didn't have a problem getting in there. Let me pick it up. Oh my god, they're so tiny. Put his beak in the water. All right, so they are in there. I showed them where the water is. Let's look at these other eggs. I have two eggs I'm trying to help right now. Here's this first one. Here are the two chicks that I helped out of their shells and I put them back in the incubator so they could get warm and dry off and see if they'll make it. The other two I have put in our brooder and they are underneath the little infrared heater and I'm gonna call it a night and see what we find in the morning okay folks I'm getting ready to go into our shop to see if there's anything alive in the brooder or in the incubator I'm nervous because I hope something made it through the night so let's go find out well this is a very pleasant surprise it looks like the two that I helped hatch are alive and well and it looks like there's another third one that is popping out as well. So the two that were in the brooder are alive. One was outside of the heater and so it was kind of cold. The other one was definitely underneath the brooder and warmer. So there they are. And it looks like we have another egg in the incubator that is trying to hatch. Well that other one did hatch out so now I've got four in the incubator. I've got two in the brooder. I've decided I'm going to move it to the house and add a heat lamp to heat up the rest of the space, at least for the first couple of weeks, and go from there. I have the brooder in the house and the incubator still in our shop with four chicks in it now, and it looks like another one's trying to hatch. I'm on my way to Blue Creek Mercantile, which is our wonderful little all-purpose farm store and grocery located in our little community. They have pretty much everything you need, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to find a heat lamp there. We always get some free coffee here at the Blue Creek Mercantile. And there are some heat lamps. I just got back with my heat lamp and I put it up. I have a thermometer in there. I'm going to try to get it to about 90, 95. I'm just going to get the right temperature and then I will move the other chicks from the incubator. So far I have seven little quail chicks and they all appear to be doing well right now. Meanwhile, just in case, I cleared out the 
uh, open shells and left the five remaining eggs in the incubator for the rest of the day. I didn't see any cracks or little chips in the eggs, so not sure if anything will happen with them, but we'll just leave them and give it a try. Today is the summer solstice, and it's also day four for the quail chicks, and I'm very impressed by them. You know, I put some new hay bedding in the other day, and it must have been some tiny bugs in there. Already trying to scratch and look for bugs, and I just find that fascinating, especially since these were bred to be in, in cages, and most often they're just raised in cages. But these guys look like they are going to be some good foragers. We will see. Stay tuned, and I will keep you updated on how they're doing. Hopefully, at about week four, we'll be able to move them outside. We'll see you next time on the Tomarosa.